Hello there, it's Graciela here. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to use Power Automate to read files in nested attachments. What we mean by nested attachments is, for example, this email that we receive, and inside this email, there's another email attached. There's not the actual file. So when we open this second email is when we find the actual file that we're interested in. So we're going to be using Power Automate to access this file in the nested attachment. So for that, let's just quickly go to Power Automate and let's start a new flow. We're going to be using an automated cloud flow and our trigger is going to be when an email arrives. So let's select the right trigger and then let's assign a name. And once our flow loads, we are just going to select which folder we want to read emails from. In this case, it's going to be our inbox. And we are going to set up a subject filter because I know that these nested attachments will always say your invoice and then a space and then IND and then a dash. So I'm going to use this as filter so we only run this flow for the actual uh, emails that we're interested in. So let's just assign that trigger. And then I'm going to include attachments and make sure this is set as yes. And only with attachments, we are also going to set it up as yes. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to look for the HTTP action that is under the Outlook connector. So let's select it. And what this action does is pretty much just connecting to Microsoft API, which is called the Graph API. The Graph API is the web service that we can use to connect to many of the Microsoft services. And being Outlook, one of those services, we can use the Graph API. And these HTTP requests are really useful for automating tasks that are not out of the box present in the Outlook connector, for example. And we can also use it for things like SharePoint because SharePoint also has a send an HTTP request action. So this is pretty useful to create custom actions. And if you don't know how to do something or, or if you're curious how you can use the Graph API, you can just search the action you want to complete. In this case, for example, get attachment content using the Graph API and you will find the corresponding documentation. Just like I have done here, you can see that I find documentation about the Graph API. I can open this and the way that APIs work is you usually hit a URL and then that URL will give you back some information. So what we will see here is the structure of that URL. And of course, depending on the action that you want to perform, the URL or the, ser the web service we need to hit, it's going to be different. For what we need to do here is this, um, is this a structure. We are always going to write graph.microsoft.com and then version one. And then this is specifically for the action we want to make. If this is going to be, for example, related to a different action, this may not be the same, but you can always look at the documentation just like we have done here. So in this case, I have access to the mailbox, which is because it's my actual inbox. And then we're going to access the mail folder and then the inbox. And then we are going to access the messages. And after that, we are going to indicate what's the email ID. And then we are going to indicate what's the attachment ID. These two parts in our in our URL that are like in these curly brackets, those are the dynamics par dynamic parts of our URL. So for now, I'm going to delete the message ID and then I'm just going to write ID here. So then we're going to select the message ID, which is here and replace it but we have what for what we have first and then the attachment id we are going to do a similar thing i'm going to remove these curly brackets and then uh, select the attachment id once we do that power automate will grab this http request action around and apply to each this is because one email can have multiple attachments so power automate recognizes that this may be uh, this can apply to multiple files that are present in our email the method that we need to use is get as it stays as it is, the body will stay as it is, and the content type will also stay as it is. And once we have our action, what we need to do is just add a compose, and we are going to grab the content from the previous action and convert it to string. So let's select the compose action.
and I am just going to click on the field and select the body. Then let's get the body and open a notepad so we can paste it. And we are going to convert this output into a string just by writing the formula or the function string and then close parenthesis at the end. And then let's copy and then let's paste. And now let's send ourselves an email so we can test it as it is, as it is for now. Okay, so I got my email and you can see we have the result here from the call to the graph API where we are grabbing the value of the attachment. This is what we get from the service. And then when we convert that to string, here we have the actual content of our attachment. We have, for example, who sent it, what's the uh, subject, and we also have the actual email content, the text that it has, like the invoice attached. And if we keep scrolling, we're going to see more information about your email, like the attachment, which is the actual thing we're interested in. So now you can see that I have my attachment name here, the attachment content type, content type here. A little, if I scroll a little bit down, we're going to find this content transfer encoding, and then it says base 64. In case you don't see it, you can just do Control F and then search base 64, and that should help you find this text. So I'm going to copy this keyword and paste it into the notepad we're using to take uh, some formulas. And then if we keep scrolling down to the results a little bit more, almost at the end, we're going to notice that the actual content ends here. And it ends right where we find this with this text. So we're going to also copy this and I'm going to paste it as well. So as you can see, what we have in between the base 64 keyword in these characters is the actual content of the file. It's just encoded in base 64 format. So what we need to do is to just grab this base 64 text and then connect it and then use it to create the file into SharePoint. So now we know where the content is. We just need to apply some PowerFX functions to extract the text in between the delimiters. So the first thing we are going to do is to split it to find what we have after the base 64. So I am going to copy uh, this keyword and we are going to be using the function that is called split. So we are going to split the string that we have here and we are going to split it using the keyword base 64. We are interested in what is after this keyword, so we need the last element or the final, the last element that the function finds. So in that case, we are going to write last here. So what this is going to do is just get what is after the base 64 keyword. Now, it's important to mention that Power Automate, when it's reading this information, here it's able, it's, it is able to um, deploy it or show it to us or render it in a way where we see the break lines and all that. But uh, for some reason, Power Automate, when it's reading that information in the backend, it's not able to find some characters. So we need to make a small change in the text so Power Automate is able to recognize where we find some uh, special characters. So in that case, we are going to be using this decode URI component from Power Automate. And we are going to be replacing that text for nothing. That way we are able to find all the information that we need. And what this will do, it will just replace the break lines and the break lines are represented in URI components this way and we are going to replace it by nothing. Now that we have extracted what is after the base 64 and we have extra also replaced the break lines, we are also going to get what is before this other keyword that we found out when we were exploring the content of the results from the graph API. So for now, we are also going to split. And this time, instead of splitting by base 64, what we are going to be doing is splitting by this 
other set of characters that we found that it's going to be at the end of the actual attachment. So let's place it here. And in the base 64 scenario, we grabbed the last item because we wanted what, what was after it. Now we want to find what's before it because remember that we are interested in what's in the middle of what we have here. So in between base 64 and these characters. So now we are interested when we did the first part we grabbed this and now we are interested in just this so that's the first element power automate finds so now we are going to do that and we are going to convert it to first and for now we are going to just use it as it is right now so we can test it in power automate and see the results so i'm going to remove this and then paste it then save and once it's saved we are going to do a quick test just to see the results and make sure that we are actually grabbing this text in the middle okay so it's saved and let's resubmit and once it runs if i open the compose action you are going to see that indeed we have the actual text here in the middle which is what we are interested in as it said when we were exploring, it's in base 64. So we need to convert this into a friendly format for SharePoint. SharePoint usually uses binary to create files. So what we just need to do is to convert this function that we have here into a binary. So for that, if I go to expression here, there's an actual function that is called base 64 to binary. And we just need to copy this text and we're going to use this base 64 around the formula that we already had. And this is going to convert this text into something that SharePoint can use to actually create the file without it being corrupted. So now I'm just going to paste this here. And now we are ready to add our action here to just create a file in SharePoint. So let's um, search for the create file action and create file is here so now let's say we're gonna save it in this el salvador sharepoint group and then the folder path we have one right under shared documents and it's here and then it's going to ask us which is the name we are going to be using the subject because that one has the invoice number and then we're going to write dot pdf and finally the content is going to be the result of our compose so now, now let's save and let's send ourselves an email so we can test this. And now our flow has run. You can see that the file has been created. Now let's go ahead and check our folder. And let's make sure that it was saved properly. And yeah, you can see that this is the actual file that we received in the email. If I go here you're going to see that that's the very same file saved with the right format and the right name and all of that. So now the only thing that we're missing is a um, step to validate that this will only happen for files that are .eml because if we try to run this over a different type of file, this will fail. So I'm going to add a condition inside the apply to each and here in the choose a value, let's use the attachment name and when an email is attached into an email that is a specific type of file which is dot eml so this is what we want to check that if this is an e is it's an nested file then this should only happen for this set of actions should only happen for this type of file so now we're going to do it that it ends with this specific text and this should work and for from now on you will be able to get the attachments from nested emails i hope that this was useful for you see you next time